Hi, so I'll continue with the chapter on fingering in Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach's book Versuch über die wahre Art das Klavier zu spielen and this is paragraph 71. Die Quarten werden gegriffen wie wir bei Figur 44 sehen. Bei dem Diskantschlüssel werden die untersten Noten mit der linken und bei dem Bassschlüssel die obersten mit der rechten Hand genommen. Die Gebrochenen in langsamer Zeitmaß haben eben diese Setzung. Bei vielen hintereinander vorkommenden geschwinden Quartensprungen ohne halbe Töne wird ohne Abwechslung 1, 4 oder 5, 2 eingesetzt. A. Ah. Bei vorkommenden halben Tönen kann man auch dann und wann, aber nur einmal ohne Folge, 2, 4 nehmen. B. Diese Sprünge werden auch mit 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4 und 5, 3 gespielt, sobald die noch folgenden Noten solches erfordern, wie wir bei C und folgenden Exempeln sehen. So here's figure 44. And here's the first example. And you can see in that, he's keeping the little finger away from the black notes as he does with the thumb. And that first quarter or um, fourth, If that was AC fingering, you'd use the thumb on the G instead of the second finger. And that second fourth, that's exactly in the right hand, that's exactly AC fingering. The third fourth is as well AC fingering exactly. And the last fourth, you'd have the third finger on the G instead of the fourth finger. And I'll play the two demonstrations, or the two versions. And if you were to try both versions, you would notice that box fingering doesn't feel, it feels like it needs practice. And if you see the, the fourth finger there um, on the right hand, you can see that it's switching. It's going from a black note, the B flat, to a white note, the G. And that is, you know, it has to, it has to seek out that new position as it does that, that fourth finger. And I was thinking you could as well call that switching lanes. When, when, you, when you alternate between a black and a white key, you're making the fingers switch lanes. So in that sequence, the fourth finger has to switch lanes, which is an extra job. If you think of, let's say, the fourth finger playing black keys and moving along the keyboard, it basically just has to press down and the hand takes care of the movement. Whereas when, when it has to switch, it, it as well has to um, move to find a location. It has to switch lanes. And the fingers are not very good at switching lanes. So you have the fourth finger switching lanes. And then if you see the second finger on the G in the right hand, going to the E flat, that as well is switching lanes. It's going from the white key, the G, to the black key, the E flat. And so that has to, not only is there, it can't stay in the same position and just be moved by the, the hand or the arm, like whatever you, it would be that controls that movement. That's not enough. It has to move, switch position. So you have two fingers switching lanes on the right hand. And that 
makes it slower, more unsteady. That creates the feeling that if you were to examine it, that is essentially what you're practicing when you practice, when you play it slowly, when you try and get the, you know, like they call it the muscle memory, all that. That is, you can boil it down to that element. That is what you're practicing. And I think Chopin's, what Chopin said is, is relevant there about, he said that, you know, you're, you're learning to walk in your hands, but, and you, but you, you'll, you'll never be as good walking on your hands as you are walking on your feet, but you won't be able to walk on your feet either. And that's a bit like that, that, that you'll ne switching lanes with the fingers in a, in a, you know, they need time to do that. It, it doesn't really work constantly on a short space of time and not two fingers switching lanes at once. It's a chaos. So you might hear that in the, when I play box version and then the AC fingering where you don't have to switch, no finger has to switch lanes. And you can see in the left hand as well in the box fingering, you have that second finger playing the E flat and then after the D it's switching lanes to play the C. So while the second finger on the right hand is switching lanes from a white key to a black key, the left hand is switching lanes from a, a black key to a white key. So you're, you've got this crossways sort of movement and then the fourth finger is, is, is switching lanes as well. And, and if you think in terms of traffic and all, it's a chaos if everybody's switching lanes. Everybody should stick, stay in their lane. It, the more people that switch lanes, the, the, the more chaotic the roads are. So, you know, you could see that and so, Here's the two examples. The way the AC fingering is, I can play around with that. I don't have to practice. And, and, and it's, it's kind of tough for me to play box examples because, you know, I talked about getting out of the cage. And it's like when I, when I play the examples with normal fingering, it's like I'm getting back in the cage and, and that's not something I want to do. So that's rather honestly rather unpleasant so here here I'll just you know play around with it and you can see how it it goes without practice how 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 comfortably you can slip in to playing those and it's a, it's a, a an entirely different experience to to encounter something like that in a piece of music and to have that ac fingering eliminating the need for practice. That kind of practice that everybody grows up doing with the metronome, counting out loud, hands separately, you know, putting, breaking it up into rhythms, doing all sorts of, as Chopin called them, acrobatics. And here's the second thing, the second example. 
and again you can see how Bach keeps the thumb away from the black key in the left hand. And that second fourth there, that is AC fingering what Bach used the two and the five. And in the first one you'd use one and one and five on the G and D. Or you could use one and three. And in the right hand, Bach, um, you know, he uses the third finger on the B flat and the second finger on the A. According to the AC fingering system, the, the second finger can, and the black and the fourth finger can are best at playing black keys, and the third finger is best at playing white keys. So, to divide the B flat and A with the third and the second finger, is you're you're assigning exactly that job the finger's not best at doing. It, it's, it's in reverse. So with the AC fingering, which enhances the, the result, you'd have the fourth finger on the B flat, or you could have the second finger and either the third finger or the thumb on the A. And if you listen, I'll play the examples now, you might listen out for the difference in the the sound quality of the two versions. And here's figure forty four A. And so you can see there he's illustrating what he said, you don't alternate the fingers if there no black notes occur. And so with the AC fingering, I'll, I'll demonstrate it there, you could use three and five or one and five or um, one and three, doesn't matter. And in the left hand with, with box fingering, I, I used I just alternated between one, two going down, um, just to make the example a little longer. With the AC fingering, I alternated between one and three. And perhaps you will again, watch out for the differences in, in the performances. And here's the second example in, in figure 44a. You know, this, in terms of, of, of how it's played, it's not gonna work exactly the same as the first example, because that figure in the left hand changes the nature of the music. It's not the same as when it's above so I can't replicate the first example of A. And so, yeah, you can see he uses 414 and 525. And, and you could potentially, depending on the circumstances, you could use 525 as you can in the first example with the AC fingering. Oh, you know, like I say, depending on the circumstances but you would be opting for, you wouldn't be using the best fingers when you use the two on a white key. 
And the same with the E and the D, where Bach uses three and two, with the AC fingering, you'd opt for three and one, depending. But if there's no reason not to, you'd use three and one. And here's the first example of figure 44b. Using the two and four, what he says you can use once, but only once and not again and again. That two and four is exactly AC fingering. Only on the left hand there, on the E flat and A flat, on the C you wouldn't use the fourth finger. Definitely not. And you can see with this fingering, with the, only with the AC fingering, I'd I'd agree with that that you can use the two four two, but it's it's not just once that you'd use it. You can use it whenever two of those notes in the fourth are black. The two notes are black notes, so whenever that's the case, you can use two and four. So with the AC fingering that opening for it, the A flat and D flat, you'd use two and four there. And you can see with with box fingering, if you try, if you play box fingering, you will you will notice that this again, this example needs practice. And I when I play it there, you know, I don't, I don't want to practice it, to be honest, because like I said, I'm, I'm back in the cage if I'm trying to play it like that. So I'll just play it as best I can with box fingering. But what you have there is the little finger switching lanes from the D flat to the C. That second fourth is exactly AC fingering what Bach uses. That third fourth did F and B flat, that's AC fingering. The fourth fourth is AC fingering and the last one is AC fingering. The only one that isn't AC fingering is the first one. And that causes a problem that fifth finger on the black key, it's not good. The fourth finger works better and so and I'll, I'll I'll play it I just I just play through it you know without any preconceived like plan I'll just play through the notes to to illustrate how natural it goes and 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 what you get without practicing it and so there can can be like pauses and and maybe mistakes there because I'm not planning it so it, I'm not going to have it clearly in my head at that you know I'm not a I'm not a genius or anything like that when it you know in terms of improvisation or whatever so this is to show how it works without practice just spontaneously this is how it works if you were sight reading a piece this is what you'd come up with of course it would be better because you'd have the notes to guide you so I, you wouldn't stray like it does perhaps in, in, in moments. But I just wanted to show you so you can hear the difference. And with the left hand with box fingering, um, you wouldn't have that fingering with the AC fingering because you're having the fourth finger on a white key and 
you know, Bach recognized the, the, the value of that 242 on, on two black keys. But what's detracting from, from really realizing how great it is, is that fourth finger on the left hand on the C. That takes that, that, that obscures the, the, you know, the clear vision, the clear view. So if you have the thumb or, yeah, the thumb on that C, you will get the, the clear view of just how great it is. Here's the second example of B, and this is in the left hand. And that 424 and the 414 that Bach provides, that's exactly AC fingering. And if you try 414 and 525 as Bach includes, you will see how much worse they are. They are quite terrible. Um, if you were to hold it to the AC fingering standards, you would not want to use them and you would not use the fourth finger on the E sharp or the third finger on the D sharp. And here's C, figure 44C, the first example of C. And aside from that second finger on the E, this is exactly AC fingering. And so I'll, I'll demonstrate the box. And, and this is, you can see the fourth, the G to the C, he's using one tree. These are to illustrate the different Com possibilities in playing a fourth. So this is the one and three possibility in this first example. And I play the, you know, the, the E with it, with the third finger doing the AC version because that's the complete AC version. 
and perhaps I'll just repeat the pattern and perhaps you can hear a difference in the rhythm. And as well you can, you can maybe hear that what I'm talking about is not obvious differences. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about s subtle, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're getting sophisticated or really like, you know, these are differences that a connoisseur will notice. So these, these are the, the differences I'm talking about. It's not obvious playing, being able to play it or not play it. So, here's the first example of C. And here's the second example of C. And so Bach, you can see the fourth is used with one and two. The other possible, you know, combination that Bach mentioned in the par paragraph. And you can see here, you could maybe understand how Bach arrived at that fingering. And it, it would be all it would be based on the, the the position of the keys on the keyboard and, and in relation to where the fingers are. So so it would make sense. A lot of a lot of people will choose two, four, and five to finger that. And it makes sense when you when you see the relative positions of the, each key that you're playing, and, and how they fit to the position of the fingers and I would say this is a good example of um, what I said that that first commandment I am the Lord your God and you shall not have false gods before me here what Bach is holding as the one true God in this case is the, 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 the position of the keys in relation to the position of the how the fingers are on the hand and so this is, and it's his one true God because this is the deciding factor. So he, he picks one, two, four, and five. So, and you, I'll play the example and you can maybe hear for yourself the difference in, in, in rhythm and how it works where with the AC fingering, you're not basing the decision on on the distance, you're basing it on what finger can do what job best. So here's, I, on the bottom is the AC fingering. So you'll be using the five on the E and the A and the third finger on the C. And the distance with the AC fingering, the, the, the job the, the fingers can do best is, is the one true God, as opposed to the, the distance being the one true God. And then you can perhaps hear the difference in rhythm. And, and when I, I'll play it and I'll just continue the pattern just so it's enough to hear.
And here's the third example of C. And this as well is AC fingering, exactly. You can see he's using 5, 3 and the fourth. Bach is using 5, 3 and the fourth. And I just have in brackets there the 1 and 5, just to show that with the AC fingering you can apply the formula so you don't have to, you can alternate. So let's say you're going down to the D after that A at the end. Well, you could use your fifth on the A and you could use the thumb on the first A and then the thumb on then the third finger on the second A. You know, you're not, the fingers are not stuck on, you can use any finger on any key as long as it's that key that it can best play. So I just thought I'd include that just to show the, the variation that's possible with the AC fingering. And here's the fourth example. And again, you can imagine that Bach decided on that fingering given the relative positions of the keys and the fingers and how the second and fourth, that the E and the A, the, the gap between the E and the A, lend, you know, it, it, it justifies the use of the second and fourth finger. And then the fifth and the thumb, it, it seems to fit that configuration of keys, of, you know, the keys, distance of the keys. And underneath I have written the AC fingering. And this, this, um, is different than the first two examples of C in that it, this is based on the pivot. It, it the, the pattern, if you repeat the pattern, it pivots around the E. And if you were to look at this fingering in terms of how I've looked at fingering when I, you know, when I looked at um, just normal fingering and with the revolutionary etude and the use of the pivot, you can see here that in a passage where it pivots, in the previous passage it pivots as well on the A and you can see Bach uses the pivot as Chopin called the third finger. In this example it is as well pivots and Bach doesn't use the pivot at all. So he's using his one true God is distance. Above all else, distance is the highest. And whereas with the AC fingering, it's not distance that governs. And if you look at it, I just show, you know, in terms of left and right of the pivot. You know, Bach uses the thumb once in that passage. He uses his second finger four times. He uses the third finger zero times, the fourth finger twice, and the fifth finger once. And with the AC fingering, you're using the thumb three times, the second finger zero times, the third finger twice, the fourth finger zero times, and the fifth finger three times. So what you get with Bach is five zero three in terms of the number of times you use the fingers left and right of the pivot and, and how many times you use the pivot. So it's five zero three. And with the AC fingering, it's three two three. So the AC fingering balances perfectly. And when you hear the two examples, the important, the important thing about that and the important, you know, if you, you were to test the AC fingering in laboratory circum, you know, conditions, it would, it would win. That would be great for it to happen. I'd, I'd love that to happen because that would, you know, objectively determine you know, the, 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 the correctness of the AC fingering system. But what's important is how it affects your playing. And if you, I'll, I'll repeat that pattern using box fingering. 
and then the AC fingering system. And what influence does that have when, when there's a perfect balance and you're using the pivot on that? And you might hear the, the difference between, like while Bach, you know, Bach's version, I play it as good as possible, but it, it sounds more like notes that I'm playing when I play Bach's version. And when I play the AC fingering version, you can maybe notice that it takes on a different quality. It has a, a more of a roundness, more of, there's more shaping, more going on, and the rhythm is, is, is more alive with the AC fingering. And that's the, that's the, that's the, at the end of the day, all the objective kind of analytical stuff doesn't matter. It's, it's how it tran, how it serves you is, is what's, is the only thing that's important. And I would say, if you think I'm, you know, d manipulating it deliberately and you think you can play that sequence with box fingering better than I can, that's great. I would say, you know, try it out and, and prove me wrong. And then when you try the AC fingering, just see how you enjoy playing it. And you might notice, I mean, I, I, I repeat the, the, the box, box fingering less often. And, and that even that is, is, is natural. I, I didn't consciously do that, but you, you, you want to play the AC fingering version longer. It's just more enjoyable to play. So, yeah, listen in terms of rhythm, um, shaping, expression, just character, all those things, just compare the two. <clears throat> And here's the fifth example of C, and that's exactly AC fingering. And again, he's using one tree on the fourth. It's an example of where you use one tree. The next example, again, he's using two and four. He's using two one with the fort and he's using two and four in the sequence. And with the AC fingering, you'd use three and five. And again, it's not the distance that governs the AC fingering, it's those jobs that takes precedence over distance. That's more important than distance. <laughs> Here's the seventh example, and that again is AC fingering, exactly as AC fingering, and there he's using 5-3 on the fourth. And underneath I have written in just again to show that you're not confined, you, know, you, can, you can apply the formula any way you can imagine or, or come up with. So you're not stuck to, to certain patterns. You can alternate them. You can come up with new patterns you might not have thought of before. And 
And here's the eighth example for the left hand where for the fourth Bach is using two four. And again, you could perhaps imagine how the distance uh, the relationship between your fingers and the keys. And that goes back to what he said um, at that paragraph where he said, we're now moving on to the polyphonic ideas and that you can see there again, if you repeat that sequence, you're, you're pivoting on that F. And again, Bach doesn't use the pivot. And underneath is the AC fingering, and you can see with the AC fingering, again, they're using the pivot. And if you look at, you know, what fingers are used, left and right of the pivot, it's the same. Bach uses the thumb once, the second finger four times, the third finger zero times, the fourth finger twice, the fifth finger once, you get five, zero, three. And with the AC fingering, you're using the thumb three times, the second finger zero times, the third finger twice, the fourth finger zero times, and the fifth finger three times. So you're getting three, two, three. And I would say if you're near a tabletop or something, if you, if you um, sort of play your fingers on the tabletop using one and three, and then using two and four, and just notice the difference. You might notice a difference. You might notice a difference in the stability that that creates. It, it, yeah, you know, when you, when you strike the, the, the surface with one and three as opposed to two and one. With two and one, you might notice a certain unsteadiness. Hmm. So, and again, I'll repeat the the pattern so you can hear and perhaps you might hear how with box fingering it's more noty than the AC fingering there's less shaping you don't get that if you if you think in terms of it being balanced if you have nothing in the middle and and you're dividing on the edge it's you know you can see perhaps how how it wouldn't be as balanced as when you have one in each side and one in the middle. Yeah, so you can perhaps hear that. Quinten und Sexten werden auf dreierlei Art gegriffen, wie unter Figur 45 zu sehen ist. Aus Figur 46 sehen wir die Fingersetzung von Sexten in einer Folge. Mit diesen gebrochenen Sexten wird es ebenfalls so gehalten, wie wir bei den Tertien und Quarten gesehen haben. Bei diesen Spannungen kann der kleine Finger öfter als einmal hintereinander vorkommen und wird also auch gebraucht, ohne dass eben die Weite der Passage mit ihm zu Ende geht. So here's figure 46. And you can see the, the different fingerings Bach says you can play the interval of a fifth with and the interval of a sixth. I'll just play the, with the AC fingering you could use one and five, one and three. And you could as well, I just used, under certain circumstances, you might use three and five. Um, you could use two and five as is there, 
just like you'd be using five and one, you wouldn't use four one or one four under any circumstances with the AC fingering. Un unless you're really, you know, you've absolutely no other choice, but as long as there's any choice whatsoever, you wouldn't use one and four. So, and maybe you can hear a difference. It's again, it's, it's very subtle. It's very slight, but in the, in the sound quality you get when you're with the tree using box fingerings and then the tree with the AC fingering. Here's the left hand, it goes the same, works the same for as for the right hand. And with the sixths, it's the, you can see box fingering four one five one five two with the ac fingering it goes the same you could use one three one five or you wouldn't use three five but i just played it there just to see that it, it even though it it would seem like wrong you can hear the sound quality that even that Given, given the stretch and all, that because those fingers are so good at playing white keys, they still trump one and four. When, when even playing the interval of a sixth. And here's figure 46. So uh, it, the, the sequence of sixths. And here, this Bach uses AC fingering exactly. There's not a single thing to alter there. He keeps the thumb and the little finger away from the black keys. And the fourth finger is kept away from the white keys. And so what you have here is what, what, what Bach and the AC fingering has in common is that understanding that you keep the thumb and the little finger away from the black keys. And what you get here as well is this is as well another example of or a good example of the the way I see Bach is he he has certain things like the one true God like the keeping the thumb and the little finger away from the black keys that brings him up but the other false gods like that the thumb replaces the little finger or that the little finger is only used at the end when a passage comes to an end with it, that's pulling him down. So it's it's funny that, you know, but the, the, like the tome, you can see when it comes to six, that, that, um, that, that false God where you think that the tome should replace the little finger that is removed, so it no longer pulls box, box down. So he rises up to the level, everybody rises when they don't have a misconception, they hold the misconception in the highest regard because that'll always, you'll never rise above that, it'll always pull you down. 
And so he, given that those mis, like misconceptions, like the thumb replaces the little finger, or that the fourth finger plays white keys, with them gone, he can rise up, and then he, he gets the fingering, you know, perfect. <laughs> so don't, don't click off the channel just because I said that, please. <laughs> um, and you can hear in the example, and I, I, you, you'll hear in the example the, how natural how, how good this is and I'll, I'll just kind of play it in different ways just to see how how solid it is what great sound it produces the rhythm how you're not it's not something you have to practice and and get exactly right it's something that happens it's it's a it's a it's a, an occurrence what's going on there and so i just i'll just play those sixths just to show that. And what I would say about what um, Box says here in this paragraph about that you, it no longer applies what he said earlier about the thumb replacing the little finger um, or that it's used at the end of a passage. And this I would say is an inconsistency. This is another inconsistency. And let's say you're, imagine the little finger and, and imagine it's sport. And the little finger is, is a substitute. He's sitting on the bench and he, he's sitting there and watching the game and he wants to play and he sees that fourth finger. And every time that fourth finger plays a white key, the little finger is sitting on the bench thinking, I can do that better. And then when he sees the thumb taking his job, he's thinking, I can do it just as well as the thumb. But, and, and then he can get annoyed with the, with the trainer or the manager of the team because the thumb is not available to do the job only the thumb can do. So, so the whole team is suffering and the little finger is sitting on the bench watching all that, being frustrated, knowing that if, if only he was given the chance, he would prove that he can do the job better than the fourth finger when it comes to playing a white key and just as well as the thumb. So he sat, sit on the, he sat on the bench. He has to watch the whole game where he'd love to be playing. And then, you know, he's sent out when there's no other choice, then it's okay. And so you could imagine the, the little finger's reactions. He's, he might think, you know, okay, so now I'm good enough. Now I'm good enough for that. Before I wasn't, but now I am. So, Bach arrived at the AC fingering when he had no choice anymore, when he was freed of those things holding him back from it. He, he, he got the AC fingering exactly right. And, and in order to do that, he had to be inconsistent. Whereas the AC fingering has this exact fingering that Bach has, but it has yet there has yet to be a single inconsistency with the AC fingering. And I don't know, perhaps you will have noticed that or you can, you can notice that and you, you can examine it and agree with me that the AC fingering has remained consistent and still then when, when, when the choice goes, when it, when it gets to what's possible, Bach finally arrives at the AC fingering. And he is there, you'll see it um, as we go on. I mean, this is a big chapter. S fingering is a big subject. You'll, you'll, you'll see it coming through all the, where he's, you know, where he, he's, he's, he's constantly being drawn towards AC fingering, but he's being pulled down. And that's exactly what a misconception will do is it'll prevent you from figuring out the truth and you'll always be held down by it. It's like if you think of it in, in you know, in, in science or physics or something, if you believe that the size of the objects when they fall affect the speed they 
for that. That element is going to, in your calculations, it means you'll never get the right calculation because you're always including that idea that the, the size of the objects influences the speed at which they fall. As soon as you, and that's a false God. And when you have the true, one true God, where you know, like what Galileo discovered, that that plays no difference, it plays no role in the speed at which the objects drop. All of a sudden, your calculations are gonna start working out. You're gonna suddenly rise in, in the heights you can achieve, in the truths you can discover, because you're not being held down by that um, misconception. And it can go like in a jigsaw, when you have the wrong piece in a place, none of the pieces around it fit. But if you remove that false God and put the right piece in, all of a sudden you might notice when that happens, if you're making a jigsaw, that you, you get five or six in a row. It's like you have a, you're having a lucky streak. Suddenly they all start to fit. It's the exact same thing. So, yeah, <laughs> and we'll see as we go on um, more of the AC fingering cropping through and, and how Bach is, he's, he has the, 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 the thumb and the little finger staying away from the black keys. That is actually, a, that is not a misconception. That is true. The, the thumb replacing the little finger, the fourth finger playing a white key, the, the, the distance being a reason to choose fingering as opposed to fingering fingers doing the job they can do best. That is, um, they are all misconceptions, false gods, they're pulling them down. And, and you get like that in the, the previous example, like the, Eight, the one in the left hand, number eight in C, figure 44, you're playing notes instead of making music. It, it affects your playing. And I don't know if you think I'm uh, being arrogant or something when I say how good the AC fingering, but it, it shouldn't, it's not, it's not out of arrogance that I say it because if you think of it in maths terms, if I say two plus two equals four, that can't be arrogant to say the right answer. And to say it is the right answer, that's not arrogance. And to say that the AC fingering is the right answer is not arrogance either. And I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't give me pleasure AC the, the, the fact that the AC fingering is the right answer, that really doesn't give me any pleasure. And I get annoyed rather with normal fingering. And the, the, the real thing that's of value to me with the AC fingering system is what it means for my playing. The, the, the real value is in that I can immediately start playing the music. When I sit down to a new piece, I can, it doesn't matter what it is, I can immediately bypass, it eliminates practice. I, I can il bypass that practice stage and go straight to the playing stage. And all I need to do is get to know the music. That's it. And that's the nicest part. You might find a certain reassurance in the daily practice and, and the routine and the regiment and feel like you've heard days, but it's, that's a bit like, like a drug, you know, it, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't last pretty, you know, after a while, you'll feel content. As long as you don't expect results, you're fine. It's nice to feel tired after a hard day's practice. But when you start expecting results, that's the emptiness that of that practice. You're not getting the results. And it means you're constantly repeating the same routine over and over again. Yeah, yeah, so. So that's that. I'll leave it at that, um, given the length of the last video. And I hope 
I hope you'll stick around for more. Um, because try it, use it. It's like, this is what I am offering. This is, I'm not expecting anything. You know, th this is what I offer in order to earn your attention. And, 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 and try it out, make use of it because if you're, if you're telling me that you're seriously wondering if you're as good as kissing now, I mean, that's, for me, that would be a reward to hear that, that it's working because, you know, I don't want to give this away. I don't want to share it. This AC fingering makes me better than, than, um, people I encounter. So why would I want to? So, and, but what would justify me sharing this is you finding out of how powerful, how wonderful it is and, 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 and discovering, like turning over a new leaf and discovering, forgetting about um, how you've, what you've learned and playing and, and, and get out of that cage and then it makes it worth it that I shared it. You know, and, and then and, and in that way I can sort of maybe come to peace with sharing it because I'd rather, you know, keep it a secret if I'm being honest. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs>